Hi teachers, in this quick tutorial I'm going to show you how you can play tic-tac-toe in your online classes. This is an excellent game if you want to revise vocabulary, if you want students to repeat certain structures so that they can memorize them. Um, you can also use it to foster a bit of competition between your learners and to just unwind a bit at the end of a lesson. I'm going to show you a very simple way for you to create your own tic-tac-toe games and I'm also going to show you a lesson where I play a tic-tac-toe game with two of my students. Um, so the first thing you're going to have to do if you want to play tic-tac-toe game like Aziza's style is download a program called eBeam. If you look at the description of this video, you will see that there's a link for you to download the software. It's 100% free of charge. I personally think it's an excellent tool for you to use in your classroom. When you download the eBeam scrapbook, you will get something that will look a little bit like that. And what we're looking at here is the board, as I said. So what I do here is the same thing I would do if I was playing tic-tac-toe in real life. So you pretty much draw your tic-tac-toe. I'm doing this by clicking on the little line that you have near the circle. Um, you can also choose a different color if you want. There's also a couple of different things I'm not going to go over today, but I'll do a special tutorial just about the eBing scrapbook. So first thing I'm doing here is I am, as I said, creating the tic-tac-toe. Now, what I want to do with my students is I want them to pick where they're going to want to um, write. So I thought, mm, how can I do that in a way that doesn't get them speaking their first language or feeling completely lost? So I've decided to number my spaces. If you're teaching them the alphabet, you can also use a couple of confusing letters of the alphabet, for example, um, to get them to speak to each other. Uh, to get them to pronounce the letters, sorry, but also to speak to each other. Okay, so now I've got the numbers. Now, you need to think of what you want to revise with your tic-tac-toe, what you want to do. Do you want to work on vocabulary? Do you want them to ask each other questions? Uh, what's the topic of your tic-tac-toe? In the class where I played tic-tac-toe, I wanted to revise can I have as a structure? Um, and I wanted to revise some common travel objects. With these two students, I just covered um, travel English topics and we talked a little bit about very common things that you ask for in class. Once you have that sorted out, what you are going to do is you're going to show this to your students but you're not going to show them the pictures you're going to go online so in my class i actually found the pictures as i spoke to my students it's quite fast but you're going to go online so i'm here for example on google i'll copy that image and paste it in a folder. You can also do this on your desktop. So here, for example, I've got two images, uh, but you can copy pretty much all nine images that you're planning to use. If you do this before your class, it will save you time because you won't have to interrupt the game to find the images. You can also copy these images throughout the lesson and kind of use the tic-tac-toe as a way to revise the content that you covered in that lesson. So once you have all the images on a folder or on your desktop, like I only have three here, but you can also copy the other ones. What you're going to do is, as you play the game with your students, when they pick a number, so 
that say you have a student, you tell your student, what number do you want? And they say, I want number two, okay? So what I'm gonna do as a teacher is go to that folder where I have the pictures and I'm gonna choose one of the pictures. So say I wanna choose this picture. So I'm back here on Google and what I also want is to have crosses, to have crosses and knots for my students. I literally just go on Google and I type tic-tac-toe cross. And then once you do that, you will find a cross. You can just copy that cross. If you type tic-tac-toe cross.png, um, you're, you might be able to find one with a, without a background, so it might be better. Sometimes if I just come up with a very spontaneous game and I don't have a lot of time to find a perfect one without anything in the background, I pretty much just use one with a white background and it's fine. So you're going to copy a knot and a cross into your computer. So here, for example, I'm going to take, let me share the full screen because it might be better. I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy. So I copied this into the computer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it into eBeam. And it's very nice because even if you're in presentation mode, you can do that. So I just... I've just dragged it into the program and now I have a knot and a cross. But I'm going to need more. So what I'm going to do in my game is every time my student gets a correct answer, I take this knot or this cross, I press control C, control V. So if I want to copy this, I just go control C, control V, and then I can drag it. Uh, you can drag it with your stylus, like I'm doing here, or you can drag it with your mouse if you don't have a stylus. So if you drag it with the mouse, it works the same way. My mouse is a bit, so it works the same way. Now, as you can see, I did not add any of my pictures to this tic-tac-toe. And the reason why I did that is because I want students to be curious about what it is that they're going to have to talk about or what's the image. I don't want them to think about it too much first because I think it makes things more spontaneous. When my student selects a number, let's say my student says five, I'm going to go to that folder where I have the pictures. So I'm going to go to this folder here. And I'm going to drag a picture from this folder into my eBeam presentation. So if you look, I've just dragged a picture and if my student said number five, then I'm going to put a picture here. In the class you're going to see, I revise common travel things and the use of can I have. So every time they got a picture, they needed to create a polite request to ask for that thing. If they gave me a correct answer, then I just went here, copied and moved and they scored a point. This was very nice because it allowed them to revise vocabulary, to practice asking questions with can I have and also to compete against each other. Um, So what I'm going to do in the class you're going to see now is I gradually show them the images as they play the game. In the end, it was a tie uh, and I could see that they were much more confident about um, asking for things politely in English. Can I have, peraí, can I have an iPhone, please? Correct or incorrect, Rafaela? An iPhone. 
Yes, no? And Barbara, it's perfect. Rafaela. Number eight. Can I have uh, can I have a coke and ice and lemon, please? Uh-huh. The only thing is we say with ice and lemon. Uh with ice and okay. lemon. Perfect. Please. Barbara. Nine. Key card. Two key cards. Uh, yes, so. Yes. Uh, I, can I have uh, two key cards, please? Perfect. Point for Barbara. Rafaela. Number one. <laughs> A Rafaela. <laughs> Rafaela is very competitive. Rafaela, Rafaela. Uh, let me... Can I have a brownie, please? Correct, Barbara. Yes. Perfect. Now you, Barbara. Four. Um, can I have another um, another uh, boarding pass, please? Can you repeat, please? Can I have another and uh, another a uh, boarding? And a boarding pass, please. Correct or incorrect, Rafaela? Incorrect. 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 Can yeah. I have? Can I have a another boarding pass, please? Perfect. I'll accept oh. it. M E I A A boarding A another boarding pass please okay another, right another no thing why another no because you're already okay. saying uh, another uh, okay now you can I her. have another board uh, uh, can, can I have another boarding card please perfect okay. Yeah. Rafaela? Number six. Of course. <laughs> Wine to Wi-Fi. So what's the question, Barbara Bianchini? I hope this has been a useful tutorial. If you create anything fun and colorful, make sure you share it with me. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> no, because the Wi-Fi is specific. Hmm. Se é específico, é o D. So, what's the question? Né? Se não, ia ser o A. Se fosse qualquer Wi-Fi, seria o A. Agora, se é específico, é o, é o D. So, what's my question, Bárbara? What's the question? Can I? Can I have? Can I have the Wi-Fi, please? Excellent.